Buongiorno amici, my name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we're going to make brodo di pollo, chicken broth. Chicken broth is a cure-all. Every culture calls it penicillin because that's what you give your elderly and your babies and everything in between. I would like to get people in the habit of not buying stocks. Start making it yourself at home. And what are you going to need? You're going to need chicken. You're going to need the trinity, the vegetables that Italians uh, start everything with practically. Carrot, celery, and I like leek, but an onion is just as good as leek. As a matter of fact, in colonial times, they would put a, a small onions, yellow onions, with the peel, wash them, and put them in the soup with the, with the uh, peel, because that peel will give you that uh, yellow, you know, that yellow color to the broth that everybody likes. In addition to the Trinity, we're going to add dried mushrooms because they have very, very intense flavor. So we rehydrate them with boiling water, we let them sit for 20 minutes, and then after 20 minutes, we're going to strain them because dried mushrooms tend to have soil attached to it. This is now clear, there's no foreign matter in there, and these will be washed. Now I'm washing them so that these can be put into the broth. In addition, we're going to add parsley, with the stems, Italian flat leaf parsley only, not curly parsley, whole peppercorns, salt, and the stems of the fresh mushrooms that I'm going to use in another dish. I'm adding the chicken to the pot. Now, if the star of the show is going to be the broth, you put the chicken at the bottom of the pot and you add cold water. That will give you the best possible broth because most of the flavor will go in the broth. If, on the other hand, you're simply cooking the chicken to make chicken salad, then you bring the water to the boil and you lower the chicken into the boiling water and that will seal the flavor and your chicken will be better. So, for broth, you need cold water and for chicken meat, you need hot water, okay? Remember that. The chicken has come to a boil, a fast boil, and I've lowered the heat because that chicken has to simmer, not boil harshly. It's going to simmer for 10 minutes while I prepare the vegetables. So the vegetables are going to be cut coarsely. And this is the, the leek. Cut that too. This gives a, a really lovely flavor to the broth. Let's take these stems. These are all washed. All I'm doing now is taking the stems and putting them in the broth. I'm taking the stems off to use to put into the brodo, and I'm saving the caps for another dish. Uh, let, let me make a, a note at this point. I, I used fresh chicken for this broth, but if you buy a barbecue chicken, I mean, what, what I do is, I, if I buy a barbecue chicken, which everybody likes, um, we have it for dinner. We, we take out whatever we're going to have for dinner. And the carcass with some of the meat left over goes into a pot and makes broth. Because if you take a chicken or any meat that's been roasted and you put it in a pot to make broth or gravy, you're going to get a lot of flavor. And it's for free, it's for nothing because you would have thrown it out. Do you throw away your turkey? <gasps> I hope not because call me and I'll come and get it. I remember when I found out that one of our friends who used to invite us for Thanksgiving every year, when she said that, she, I said, what, what do you do with the carcass? I mean, I would never ask for it because most people make soup out of it. Or she said, I throw it out. I said, what? You call me and I'll come and get it the next day. Because that makes really superb uh, soup. If you have your, your roast chicken, when you're finished with it, Save the carcass, put it in the freezer. Next time you make chicken soup, add it. Okay, so we're going to add, I'm not cutting these. 
you know, I'm just going to add them to the brogue and the parsley. So now we have a very small thing to do before we add all this wonderful stuff. We're going to skim any foam that might be there because you want a clear broth. You don't want a broth that's cloudy. You see what I'm doing? I go right around the, the, the perimeter of the, of the pot and get rid of any of that, any foam residue. All right, now we put this in. This, these are the vegetables that we prepared going into the pot. And we're adding the mushroom liquid. That's gold. You don't throw that out. Lastly, we're going to add the uh, whole peppercorns. And this is a tablespoonful of salt. It might need more, so at some point you have to taste it. Remember that you can't take it away. So you start with a modest amount. You start with a tablespoonful. And then if you need more, you put more. Okay. I'm raising the heat so that it comes to a full boil. We always want to do that. You let it come to a full boil, and then you lower the gas so that it continues to boil, but it should bubble gently. I'm going to let it simmer for an hour and a half to two hours. At that point, you taste it, make sure that it has enough salt, and uh, just let it cook down because it will concentrate the flavor. Look how beautiful that green is. You know, when you put it into boiling water, it just sparkles. When you make your own broth, you can customize it any way you like. If you can't have salt, you don't put salt. Then you can compensate for the lack of salt by adding a little bit of pepper. You know, sometimes a, a squeeze of lemon juice in different dishes will compensate for salt. Did I tell you that you could make a wonderful pastina with this, take a cup and a half of this lovely luscious broth and add a quarter of a cup of pastina. Pastina is a very, very small pasta made into stars, made, my favorite is something called semi di melone, which is uh, melon seeds. It's a little bit like orzo. Yeah, semi di melone is somewhat similar to orzo, but very, very small, very flat, and, and it's very smooth, and I sometimes have that for breakfast. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to lower it to a simmer. I'm going to cover it and come back to it in about 10 minutes to be sure that it's boiling, but the boil has to be extremely gentle. So now it's time to read a book. We're going to relax, read, and come back in two hours and have our broth ready. Our broth has simmered very slowly for two hours. This is the chicken, of course and this can be served boned and saved to put back in the soup. Many people like that. Italians like their soup clear. We never put the meat in the soup. You can use this later. You can eat it as boiled meat, which we also love, or made into chicken salad. All right, here we have a colander and a very fine sieve because I want to trap all the little bits this would be very nice with a little vinaigrette. Actually, <laughs> I said vinaigrette, you could do vinaigrette, but what I like is olive oil, lemon juice, salt, and just drizzle it on if you'd like a dressing on it. I'm taking out the vegetables. The mushrooms are good too, so we'll put them here. Somebody might like them. All right, now, suppose you wanted to use this broth immediately. Please look at the surface. This is fat. Now, at one time, this was prized. People would never take it out because they liked it, but we don't like that, that much fat in our food. So let me show you what you can do if you want to use this broth immediately. Of course, if you put this in the refrigerator after it's at room temperature, and the next day it will have a layer of fat that's solid, but all you have to do is take a fork and take it out. Suppose you need to use it right away. You can't wait to chill it. You get one of these. It looks like a piece of uh, chemistry equipment. The spout goes to the very bottom, right? So if you fill this with broth, what's gonna happen to the fat? It's going to float on top. So since you're pouring from here, you're not gonna have any fat in your broth. I'm going to pour it into this separator. This is called the fat separator. Now look. You see the, the, the fat that is accumulated on top? And 
because <laughs> water seeks its own level. Look, there's a little bit of fat on the spout. So we're going to pour it out. Let's pour it out. So now, whatever I pour up to this is going to be clear broth with no fat. So I'm going to put it here. Everybody should know how to make a good broth. Then you can do with it all sorts of things. You have lots of meals right here. You could make pastina with this, you could make noodles, you could make risotto. This can also be made into a delicious gravy. You could take this, make it into gravy, pour it over that. You could make chicken pot pies with this. You make the gravy with the broth and you make the pot pie with the chicken. So, you know, this is many, many different meals. Of course, this freezes, freezes very well. I freeze it in quart con containers because then you have more possibilities. Keep an eye out for future videos in this series and see what I make with this broth. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following me. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. <laughs> I enjoy your comments too. So do comment if you have something to tell me. And I accept comments, criticism, anything. And I try my best to answer everyone. Sometimes it takes me a little time, but persevere. Ciao, alla prossima volta.